Hi. Yes. There he is. You figured it out. I figured it out. I can't I just, believe someone really called like, you a boomer. Like, How rude. Four things that I can never figure out. <laughs> How are you? I am doing all right. I'm doing all right. How are you doing? I am okay. My my fiance is at work today, so I am alone at home, um, missing him dearly and hoping he's okay. For for those of you who don't know, my fiance is an emergency medicine doctor, so he is fighting coronavirus and treating coronavirus right now on the front lines in New York City, which is the epicenter of the pandemic uh, currently. So that's a little scary. <laughs> it is. But, I mean, we're so thankful for him. He is what we call. Um, uh, a new age hero. These are these are going to be all the people that we tell our grandkids about um, that are doing just this incredible, selfless, scary, frightening work. Um, but so necessary, and everyone is so thankful for that. So I imagine that would be a little stressful for you. It is stressful. You know, what I, I recently wrote a piece for Self Magazine about what it's like living with an ER doctor because initially we had planned for him to have. Um, to, to be staying in our guest room and to actually not, like, we wouldn't share a bed, we wouldn't share a bathroom, like, we were going to be really diligent about sharing food, that kind of stuff. Um, and then we just kind of decided, like, you know what, if we're going to be in this thing together, we're going to be in this thing together. And mm -hmm. for some reason, like, the thought of, sleep, like, sleeping alone right now or, or him sleeping alone um, would be a lot worse to me than just, like, braving it and fighting it and treating it together. So... Anyways, we made that decision, and, and I hope I don't regret it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you will. I think, I think that's really beautiful. I know just, I mean, I'm, I'm constantly thinking of all the people that are, you know, at, in isolation at home or, you know, older folk in um, nursing homes who can't see their families or people who are just struggling right now must be, be so hard. So I think if you have the opportunity to, to be with someone, I think that's, that's probably the right choice. Thanks. I appreciate yeah. that. Well, for everyone um, who doesn't know, which they already should, this is uh, Philip Bacardi, um, host of Unholier Than Now, uh, Than Thou, excuse me, columnist yes. at GQ, former editor in chief at Out Magazine, uh, and founder of Them. Uh, we are so excited to have you on. Um, you've actually been to one of our resets live, so we feel like this was such a cool thing to to bring you back. Uh, yes, the the reset 2.0. Um, if you remember from the first one, we did a little guided, just a moment of meditation. Um, as I said before, this is not my forte, but I'm doing the live, so, I'm <laughs> the live, so we're just going to do this as best we can. Um, okay. but I'm learning and I'm trying. So, okay. You don't um, do this before every game? You don't center yourself? Or is it more of a pump a specific up? way. I probably should, to be honest. <laughs> I know. I might have to add this in. To okay. Got it. Basic games. Okay. Uh, let's just start by closing our eyes, okay. taking a big deep breath in and letting it out. Feeling your feet on the ground, maybe your hands on the tops of your knees, hearing the sounds around you. Letting it all flood in with a deep breath in and out just for a moment, letting it all go. Okay. And we're back. Great that job. was nice. Yeah. Just, I feel like the breathing, talking through the breathing, that's, that's what we got going here. Yeah, that was great. Okay. Wow. I'm ready okay. now. Let's, let's get this started. Obviously, you've, you've been a part of uh, the resets before. It's basically a gathering of, um, you know, there's been artists and politicians and um, musicians and athletes and business people and people in media, every, every sort of category, and we bring people together to kind of just have, you know, thought provoking conversation to share stories, um, to sort of get that community, but then also with the big idea of, of unleashing people back out into the world, kind of with something. Um, we talk a lot about at our company, just, you know, 
I mean, in general, just defying the status quo and wanting to really evaluate that and reimagining the status quo and things we can do different. Um, and part of that is revolt. So we're going to focus a little bit on revolt today. Mm. Um, tell us about a time when you've stood up uh, against a social injustice and um, what was that and, and what kind of led to did that spark within you? So I'm a, you know, like you mentioned, I was the editor in chief of Out Magazine. And before that, I actually was at a publication called Teen Vogue. And when I joined Teen Vogue um, in 2015, it was the year before uh, Donald Trump was elected president. And uh, what I basically wanted to do, I was in charge of the website at Teen Vogue and I was all of 23 years old. There were, I think like six of us working on the website. And I decided that it would be really important for us to cover the upcoming election in a way that would invite young women to be a part of a political conversation. And so what we ended up doing was we transformed Teen Vogue's website from being about celebrities and just beauty and just fashion into covering reproductive justice, um, women's pay equality, um, which I know is a, a cause that you've championed on a national stage to huge success. Um, we covered uh, LGBTQ equality. And then of course we covered the debates. We encouraged our audience to watch the debates. And the whole time that we were doing this, Megan, like people were always telling us that we were crazy, right? Like this isn't gonna work. Teenage girls don't care about this stuff, whatever. And then lo and behold, Teen Vogue became the fastest growing women's magazine on digital for two years in a row, right? And I'll never forget being at the Women's March on DC and looking at a teenager holding a sign that said, long live Teen Vogue. Mm -hmm. So I uh, feel like, you know, with our thesis that teenage girls deserve more from the media, we stood up to an injustice that um, is really just young women being discounted from politics and from political conversations. And that then, you know, that experience and our success at Teen Vogue um, really then helped inform the rest of my career, which, you know, all, went all the way into fighting for LGBTQ equality and more visibility for queer women and trans folks at Out. Um, and then to now, which is just, you know, me doing my, my journalism thing and, and launching this podcast, which is about kind of disentangling religion from politics. And like, what could we do if we could just look at faith by reacquainting ourselves with God versus the political ways um, in which faith kind of manifests itself in America. So yeah, that's, that's that. Oh yeah. This is, this is bringing me to this moment now where I feel like we are going to have to repurpose so much. We're going to have to repurpose the way that we're taking in media. I mean, we're watching these press briefings as well. We're going to have to repurpose, you know, what community means. We're going to have to repurpose what socializing means and, you know, reevaluate that and reimagine that. What ways are you seeing or are you thinking, you know, and using that sort of creativity that you come with it at? Because it takes a lot of creativity, I think, to say, okay, we have these Teen Vogue users. This is what they normally have heard. Um, you know, this is what they're used to hearing. But, like, what should they be hearing and sort of flip the narrative like that? So in terms of, like, social norms or even bringing it back to social justice, I think we're going to see a lot of this, especially mm -hmm. with income inequality. What ways can we sort of, uh, like, repurpose our creativity and how can social justice kind of fit into that in this time when we're thinking, okay, like, how do we support local? What food banks are open? How are we getting people access to health care? Um, you know, especially with LGBTQ youth, um, you know, shelters and housing and resources are, are really important in this time in particular when maybe they can't go back to their families and shelter and stay what what ways can we sort of use our collective creativity and repurposing to really still address you know social norms or social injustice that's happening right now you hit on so many things there that <laughs> are all great things to get involved in in ways that we can make difference and, and right now i think there are two things that are standing in the way of people getting involved both of which, you know, their ultimate root is this idea that we have been disempowered by being forced to stay home. Mm -hmm. And so even that, when we talk about rethink, right, reframing that idea is first and foremost. You are not less powerful because you are socially distancing. In fact, 
trust me, my fiance is an ER doctor. You are doing the right thing by staying home. You are doing the ethical thing for your community and you are saving people's lives by staying home. You're looking out for your community and your family and your loved ones and your neighbors, right? So even this idea that us sitting on our couch having this conversation right now, this is a form of empowerment because we're doing the right thing and we're modeling the right thing for other people. So first and foremost, I want, you, I want everyone listening to know that that is the case. The I love one, that. I love thinking about it that way, just this small, small little thing of like, because I think everyone's been like, ah, we got to stay home and like, this sucks and I can't go do it. But you should be sitting on your couch every day, like in your house, like, hell yeah. I'm helping out these front line workers. I'm helping out these hair and healthcare workers. Everyone who, you know, is probably like, damn, I got to go to work right now. Like, everyone should just be on their couch, like, yes. Exactly. Like that, free framing of it. And, like, I am helping. Like, I am making a huge difference in this country right now. So I love yes. the way you said that. And the other thing about reframing, too, is that the way that we talk about staying home and not being mobile, that is a form of ableism. Right. If we look at these things as being bad, we are inherently being ableist. Right. Mm -hmm. There are plenty of people who can't show up physically to a lot of spaces. And that doesn't mean that those people are doing less than we are because we're the ones carrying the sign at the protest or we're the ones whose voice can be heard in person. Mm -hmm. um, and so I want us to be really intentional. Right. About that language we're using. And I also want us to center disabled people in this conversation a lot more. And I, and I think that that can be helpful too in, in terms of finding and tapping into your empowerment. Now, I do know, and having said all of that, I do know it can feel hard to feel like you're making an impact or a tangible impact right now. And that's all because we have to reassess what impact means. And I think this is, and I hope this will be a really positive learning for all of us in the long run. The immediate ways that we can be helpful right now are with our dollars, with our voices, and then of course, how we channel our energies during this time to make a positive difference. So these, there are just a few things that you touched on that I think are, are really good examples, right? The first thing you talked about was, was, was homelessness, right? United Way has a fund uh, on their website, that's United Way, to help make sure that homeless people and displaced people are either finding shelter or provided with the resources that they need in order to survive this pandemic. And you can donate to that fund, you can donate your money, or you can also donate your, your resources and what you have at your disposal, right? If you have clothing, if you have like other materials like batteries, old cell phones, right? They, there's a list on their website of materials that they are looking for. And they, of course, will sanitize everything before providing it to anyone. And so that's one thing you can do. The other thing you can do, though, is you can look up your local homeless shelter and call them on the phone, right? This is something that is so foreign to us young people. <laughs> Calling people on the phone works. Yes. People pick up the phone. They tell you what they need. They tell you what to do. Um, and so you can call and ask how you can be of service. The other thing is, is food. Food instability is a huge problem. We saw all of these people hoarding food at the grocery stores, right? So much so that then there were photos of old people at the grocery stores crying because they didn't have anything to bring home because they were the last in line. So food instability is a big problem all throughout our country. It should not be a problem, but it is. So call your local food shelters and see what they're in need of and see if you can make a donation, especially if you or your parents or your family were one of those folks who hoarded a lot at those grocery stores, right? That's a really great way to get involved. Those food shelters may also be looking for ways to deliver food to people who can't leave their homes. So God's Love We Deliver is a great organization here in New York City. There are plenty of food um, pantries and services that you can Google. You can type it right in on Google Maps and find one. Um, and so you can also see if you can help deliver food if you are not showing symptoms and they will provide those guidelines for you. Um, if you if you have the ability to do that. And then lastly, you mentioned LGBTQ people. I know I've talked a lot, so this will be my, my last point. No, we're loving this. <laughs> um, so basically 40% of the homeless youth in America are LGBTQ, right? And that's because a lot of LGBTQ youth are displaced from their homes. And that means that they often end up on the street. And so when we talk about displacement, when we talk about homelessness, um, we are talking about an LGBTQ issue. A lot of people don't think of homelessness and poverty as an LGBTQ issue. 
It absolutely is. When we're marching in pride, we should be marching with those people in mind first and foremost. Um, and so there are plenty of LGBTQ specific homeless shelters that are all over our country. Um, there's two that are really dear to my heart here in New York. It's Sylvia's House and the Alley Fournay Center. Uh, the LA LGBT Center out on the West Coast has a huge uh, department for this that provides a lot of resources and, and, and shelter. But you can also find one wherever you are in the country and they need your money, <laughs> they need your clothes mm -hmm. um, and, they, and they need your help, right? A another way to support LGBT youth during this time, you know, with all of the time that you may now have on your hands, this is a great way to get involved with something like Crisis Text Line or the Trevor Project. Um, which provides mental health resources to folks who are in need, specifically to, to youth who are in need, and most specifically to LGBTQ youth who are in need. So you can actually donate your time by learning how to be one of those people on the other end of that phone call. Um, and you can save a life that way, right? You don't need to leave your house um, to save a life. So those are the kinds of like volunteer charity specific ways I think that people can get involved right now. But ultimately, and my fiance says this, every single time he talks to people who say, how can we help you, Dr. Darian? What do doctors need right now? Yeah. Do you know what doctors need right now, Pino? <laughs> I do. They need healthcare reform. I know. Well, they also need health equipment. They also need masks. They, you know, they I need know. all of that stuff, but we will figure out how to get them those things. Th thanks to designers like Christian Siriano and Prabhu Gurung and Gucci, mm -hmm. who are all doing their part. Brooks Brothers doing their part, right? We're so happy for all those people. But man, what we need in this country is significant health care reform so that my fiance doesn't have to be endangered while he is doing his job saving people's lives. This it's is ludicrous. Really, it's really so, ludicrous. And I, go think, vote. I think it's actually really, yeah, go stay away from people right now, shelter in place. Yes, 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 yes. And then you will go vote, if, whether we're doing it at home or by mail. But I think it really has... Um, lay bare a lot of things because this wasn't a financial crisis this wasn't a drop in the market this wasn't a war this was, this was just nobody could control this you know it's obviously coming now it's like how are we how are we dealing with it all and i think um hopefully some major reform will come will come with this but i loved what you were saying before because i actually feel like it speaks two different ways there's like some people that are going to be watching this or just some people in the world that are the people that need to go to the shelter and they need to be able to rely on the shelter or rely on, um, you know, the, the food assistance or, you know, just your, your help from your neighbors. And so for those people, you know, we're not asking them to pick up the phone and to do all this. Like, we need to do that. If you have the ability to do that, do that for these people. So we can all be in this together. We're sort of speaking to everyone at the same time in the same sense that you can say that you can donate food to a food bank. You know, someone is going to need that food. So... Yes. Hopefully we can, um, you know, try to take care of, of everyone. And, and I think this, you know, this pandemic is really sort of um, just cut across all lines. It doesn't really matter if you, you know, have money or whatever, you can get sick and this can really affect everyone. So I feel like we're all in this together. And yeah. uh, I think it, it, it is really an opportunity for us to redefine and repurpose what community, what help, what being there for each other looks like during this yep. and using our different ways of creativity for creating apps to make it more efficient to drop off groceries at people's doors or people, you know, Christian Siriano, Papa Barong, they're, they're repurposing their whole factory, their whole creative life to be of assistance during that time. So how do we all sort of almost take this challenge um, with kind of a chip on our shoulder? Like we can, we can do this, we can make a big impact as a community. Um, so I guess that's that's our, our charge to everyone is to find those ways, big and small, that um, we can all do that. And, and certainly you are a huge voice in that and your partner is obviously on the front line. So we're, we're so thankful for that and so thankful for you coming on here and sharing um, all of the amazing organizations. We'll definitely put links up for all of those in ways that, that people can yeah, sure. Um for sure. We, just, we love having you on so much. It's been so much. Thank nice, you. So nice I, I wanted to add that, you know, like, a lot of the stuff we're talking about are like these these tiny ways that are taking civic action or getting more involved in our communities, even from the comfort um, of your own home. But please don't forget that, you know, at, at the heart of revolution, and, and, and even when all of us, for example, let's take this example, when all of this started and we were ordered to stay at home, the first thing that all of us did was opened a book, 
started watching Netflix, turned mm -hmm. on our favorite music, finally pulled out that instrument and learned how to practice, right? So where do we turn when everything shatters around us? We turn to the arts, right? Art and creativity is yep. the fullest expression of humanity, compassion, and love. A book, a movie, music can transport you emotionally. It can make you feel like you're in a different place. It can make you feel happy and fulfilled. So keep in mind that when we talk about self-care being at the heart of revolutions and revolutionary politics, what we're saying is, you know, you have to take care of yourself first. And, and the best way to care for ourselves is to express ourselves creatively. So if you're frustrated in this moment, honor that feeling by putting it down on paper or taking it out on an instrument or watching something that is going to inspire you or finally picking up that book you've never read. Like those things are all actively good things that you can be doing for yourself because if you're a better self, right, then you're going to help to make a better society. So. I, I think that, and, and I hope, you know, we all encourage people to like, take that time, turn off the news, turn off your push notifications, put your phone on do not disturb, it's okay. You know, the news cycle will still be there at the end of the day. Um, but if you need to go and make some like radical creativity happen, then it'll make your heart feel so much more fulfilled. I love that. It's progress and art and they go hand in hand. And in order for things to change, we have to imagine a whole new world and tap into that creativity and that imagination within all of us. I, that was a perfect thing. Yes. Perfect. I love that. Thank you so much. For Thank coming you. On. You're the Thank best. you so much. Thank you for everything you do. I love you so much. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Give uh, your partner a big hug for us all. And I will. That, uh, oh, and the census is last day of the census is today. Someone commented that. Thank you so much for saying that. Fill out your census. Yeah. Fill out your census. We'll put a link up for that as well uh, somewhere. But thank you. Talk Love you. Soon. Bye. Bye.